Alrighty, folks, hopefully everyone can hear me. Give me one second. Let's see about coming over here. Can you guys? <sighs> Hello! <laughs> Welcome in folks to Adobe Live. I hope that everything is looking good and sounding good. Val is fully committed to the dark side with this screen. No, hopefully not. I'm seeing buffering on Behance and I really hope that everything is looking good. Um, I'm gonna put my BRB screen up for just a moment here. All right. Hello <laughs> and welcome <laughs> to Adobe Live. My name is Voodoo Val. All right. We're about eight minutes late here, but Hello. such is life. Such and is the welcome. life of streaming Voodoo sometimes. Voodoo Things can get a little uh, difficult when uh, messing with the such internet. The um, okay, cool. Okay, I think I see everybody in the chat. I think everyone can um, see me. Is there an echo? Is there? Um, it might just be, um, the duplicate, uh, stream that was up. Um, let me know. Is that good? Okay. Um, my name is Voodoo Val and I am here for another episode of Graphic Glow Up. Um, oh, the time burning up. Yes. Welcome in Annika and Clever, um, Emin, RB, Steve, Kasaboom. It's good to see you. Rob, Becca, welcome in everyone. Um, we are going to dive straight into what I've got planned for today. Um, because uh, I know, as I said, we're a little bit late here. Um, and I kind of want to dive into it, but just a quick rundown of what we're going to be working on today. Um, I thought it would be really cool. I know it says animation up here. I need to change my little text, uh, nameplate. Um, but we were, I was like, trying to just get the show on the road for you folks. Um, we are gonna actually be putting together a streaming package today. I know there's a lot of folks here, obviously, who are familiar with live streaming, creative live streams, and all that good stuff. And I know that some of you in the chat stream yourselves, um, and some of you may be wanting to get into it. Maybe those of you who are streaming wanna give your shows a little makeover um, and stuff like that. So what I'm actually going to do is go over um, what a solid creative creative live streaming uh, package of graphics is comprised of. Um, and I'm going to show you folks how I create streaming packages, how I make overlays um, and all of those things. Um, thought there was a curfew for Val. There's no curfew for me. I am the dark side. <laughs> I don't, there's no, I don't have a bedtime. I have no bedtime, Sean. You should know this. <laughs> um, Axel, welcome in. It's good to see you. All right. So I'm going to pop over to uh, my Photoshop right quick um, and we're gonna we're gonna get into it so let me pop over here do, do, do. everything look good I am gonna change uh, my text up here real quick just so that folks jumping in to the show um, know what we are working on and I'm gonna call uh, this uh, live streaming assets package boom all right that looks good to me. Go ahead and say done. All right. So, um, what I have here is a file that Annika is going to scream at me because it is not saved. So I'm going to go ahead and control shift S just to save, um, my file, um, to my clouds here. And I'm going to call this, uh, Behance. I'll call it B E stream package. Um, and what, uh, what does a streaming package need? Okay, what is it comprised of? Where I can show you what I actually have here, just as an example, because we're live right now. So I can actually cycle through a lot of the stuff that I have in my own streaming package, um, where you can see on the screen right here. So I have, um, obviously, the intro animation that you folks saw right when we began the show. Um, but I also have, you know, my face cam stream, um, which I, I call it a face cam uh, uh, scene. Um, I think a lot of people call 
it that too, but some people just call it like a talking screen or something so that when you start your stream, if you have an intro, you would play that intro first, but then you can go into like a full cam so you can address your audience, um, answer questions, things like that. If you want kind of a personal feel or be able to like really connect one-on-one -on -one with your viewers, this is kind of a cool scene to have. Um, it's kind of like a talk show, you know, um, to introduce and outro whatever content you're sharing online and all that good stuff. We have our scenes that are for actually showcasing your creative work um, or whatever it is that you are live streaming. And I like to have two of these. I like to have two of these because I like to be able to pop myself over to the left side um, or to the right side of my screen like so. Um, and then I also have a be right back screen because uh, you never know during the course of your show, um, you may want to get up, grab a drink of water, um, maybe DoorDash knocks on your door and you gotta go get your uh, udon noodles, I don't know. Um, maybe you have uh, connectivity uh, issues or an issue with software or issue with sound on your computer, whatever it is, maybe you need to take a step back. And it's a nice thing to have um, if you need to do things like that. And then a little ending slide. See you next time, folks. Um, and you can play music or what have you. Maybe you have an intro animation or something that you like to play there as well, but um, I think that those typically are um, the, the scenes and screens that will really help you to um, kind of put on a show if you're going to be live streaming here on Behance. Um, and for each of those scenes, there's some different components for those scenes. So like here, you can see I've got my background. I've got this graphic that I've made, um, but I also have a name tag. Um, which is a separate asset all on its own. Um, and these little things right here are something that really can breathe life and give energy to your show. Um, you could have, I don't know, um, various announcements or messages um, around the periphery of your show. You can have a name tag like mine. Some people like to put their social media handles and things around the peripheral edges of their show so that newcomers or maybe longtime fans or, or friends can come in and see um, what your handles are. Um, maybe you have a new social media um, place that you are using and you'd like to let everybody know you have that. That is something that you could do. Um, you can do little scrolling banners that maybe show what um, music is playing on your stream, stuff like that. So little tiny components like this are also really great to have so that you can have a new space for other um, information and not just showcasing the screen share of your content. Some people also like to capture the chat and have a live chat module that shows who's chatting and all that good stuff. Um, so we're gonna dive in to kind of breaking down this list and creating a cohesive streaming package so that if you would like to check out um, streaming for yourself, you got a package to use. Um, I really wanted to pinch your stream assets. I love, uh, I so love the energy and colors. Thank you, I made them myself. <laughs> um, all right, so let's pop over to um, our streaming area. And what I've done here is I have made a, um, a new uh, canvas, new uh, new project here. And this is at the ratio for uh, 1920 by 1080, but I have multiplied the size. Um, I have actually changed it to be two times as, as large as the 1920 by 1080, just because I wanna work with a bigger file. Um, and depending on the software that you're using, there's different ways that you can place that into your streaming software. But for me, I actually use Streamlabs OBS. Um, so when I drag and drop my assets in um, to a scene to create something like what you see around the screen right now, um, I can just right click my files and say fit to screen. So it doesn't matter if they're larger, just, you know, gives me a, a, a lot more wiggle room and detail that I can put into my pieces. Um, but it'll still fit a 1920 by 1080 um, ratio once you actually get to streaming. So um, I am going to make myself a new layer here. I hit B on my keyboard. Um, also, let me know if there's any more connectivity issues. If you guys noted anything a little bit strange, um, let me know in the chat. Um, but yeah, so we said um, that you could do a, uh, like I have an intro, I have the Adobe Live intro, but if you don't have an intro animation, something that you can do there is just having a 
um, starting soon. You guys get to see my crazy handwriting today. So you can have a starting soon screen, um, then a face cam screen. We're gonna just make our little list here. Um, you wanna have a content screen. Um, so we'll say content, which would be the, the, the scene that we're in now. You wanna have a, a BRB screen and an ending, boom. Um, so you, that's, that's kind of the, the, the top five there. So let's start with a starting soon, shall we? I'm just going to go ahead and hide this. I'm going to call this notes, um, so that we have this. So let's do a starting soon screen. Let's go for it. Um, go ahead and hide that. Um, I'm just going to drop in a basic background here. You can start with a flat color. Something that might be cool is creating some kind of gradient map or something, but we're going to keep it simple because we're going to work through all these different elements today. And if we want to, we can noodle around with them um, uh, later on if we have more time. So I'm going to choose, we could choose purple. I could choose my own colors, but what, uh, what colors would you guys like? Do you guys want to throw some color options in the chat for me? I'll start. I'll start with something, but if you guys want to see some specific color combos, you go for it in the chat and I'll start taking suggestions. Um, if Annika says purple, I know Annika loves purple. Annika is, is, is my kind of gal. Um, but I'm going to go with, um, with purple here. Uh, and the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit B on my keyboard and I'm going to explore, um, some brushes cause I have some pretty cool texture brushes. Um, I've got a lot of Kyle's brushes in here. Um, the like Kyle's half tone, um, brush, um, the WZ circles, um, which you can actually find. I will, um, and actually maybe, um, Annika can snag uh, the link and throw it in the chat though. Maybe I will pull up um, the page because if you search Kyle Webster Adobe brushes, um, there is actually a page um, on Adobe's website that shows all of the exclusive brushes, which looks a little something like so. Um, you can come through here. Um, you'll notice a lot of these, recognize a lot of these probably from the download brushes uh, section in Adobe Fresco, which we have gone over before. Um, but you can download all kinds of brushes here. Um, and the brush that I am actually using is going to be the brushes from the Half Tones pack. So if you'd like to download those and check them out for yourself um, for this project, go for it. I highly recommend it. Um, but I'm going to start adding some texture in here, which is kind of a a similar thing um, to what I did for these overlays here. Um, keep in mind, this is going to create an atmosphere for your show, for your content. Um, so you want to choose some colors that really resonate with you um, and make it a little bit interesting. But interesting doesn't necessarily mean busy, right? Because the, the the core of your content is what you want to be a draw for people and creating a great atmosphere um, really works wonders to um, to uh, kind of make it feel like a show, make it feel like a place to be. Um, but you want to create something that acts, accentuates your content itself, you know? Um, let me see. Oh, Sean's taken off. It's good to see you, Sean. Um, thank you so much for popping in. Sorry to see you go, but we'll catch you next time. Um, waiting for Jane to return to streaming. Uh, let me see. Maybe some uh, flame and blue flames. That sounds really awesome, actually. I wonder if we could incorporate some blue. Maybe we'll do, maybe we'll, in, in honor of Sean, I think that was Sean that said that and he's taken off. Maybe we'll grab some some blue and we'll use some blue in here with this purple. Um, so with my brush, I'm gonna select these half tones. And what I like to do is I like to play around with a texture, um, something like this. That is pretty, that's pretty dark. I'm actually gonna use my stylus and I'm just gonna like lightly kind of come through here and do something like this. You can see if I zoom in here, you might recognize this texture. It's pretty darn, uh, it, 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 this is the brush that I used for these overlays. Um, and I really like it because it's not super uniform, you know, it's, it's kind of randomized. Um, and I think it looks really cool. And if I just kind of place a, a nice texture with a large brush, um, here, then I can get this nice, um, texture. 
Um, and what I want to do is just kind of mask and create a gradient with the texture brush. Um, Gareth, oh, was it Gareth that said blue flames? Well, in honor of Gareth then, um, I'm gonna go ahead and hit my mask button here um, and with a soft round brush, um, which is just one of your general brushes, which you should already have um, if you were using Photoshop along with me today, I'm gonna make sure I'm selected on black. I'm gonna make sure I'm selected on this mask and not the actual image layer itself. Uh, and I'm gonna come through holding shift to keep um, the uh, this on a straight path is I'm just going to start kind of fading out a little bit of this. Okay. Just to kind of bring it, cause I want it to be like a gradient, kind of cool, you know, something like that. I think that is actually pretty neat. Um, and then what I may do as well, um, is in between here, I will grab kind of a, um, maybe a brighter purple. We'll hold alt and select a color and I'm going to grab like a brighter purple. And with my gradient tool, which is right underneath my paint bucket tool, I'm going to come through and make sure that this is set to the basics, um, transparent linear gradient here. And I'm going to just drag down from the top just to make that a little brighter. Uh, and then on another layer, control shift in just to make a new layer. Um, I'll snag the blue color. We'll grab a darker blue and I'm going to bring some blue up from the bottom. I actually want something that's like dark blue, something that kind of um, shows this texture through here, as you can see. So you can still see that and you can fade that in. Uh, now these colors are a little crazy, right? They don't work together 100% well. Um, they're a little, they're a little wild. Um, but what I'd like to do is um, test out some color suggestions from the chat. So we have like this purple, um, and blue vibe going here. Um, but we can actually convert this to a smart object and start applying some gradient maps to it. Okay, we can test this out and see if this looks like a neat background for us to use for streaming. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, I'm gonna select all these holding shift. Uh, I'm gonna right click and say convert to smart object and I'm gonna call this BG for background. Now this is what I do for every string single streaming package I have ever made um, is I create like this one background texture. I try to get that background texture looking super crispy, super cool with the, the right colors and vibe that I'm looking for. And then it doesn't take that much just to take that background and start using it to create the other assets you need for the streaming package. So this is kind of like your ground zero. Get a little background um, going that looks super cool and you can turn it into anything. Um, so now let's uh, come over here to our uh, settings. We'll go to image adjustments and gradient map. Um, so let's see what colors, what colors we got in the chat. I saw purple. We got purple. I saw blue. We can do one that's like all blue if we want. Um, uh, I saw black. We could do some like a, like a, um, a grayscale one if we want. Um, but, uh, let me look through. I'm just going to kind of gather all of the different, um, colors. Anybody said, um, Becca says my hair looks amazing. Thanks Becca. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Um, pink, yellow, olive. I actually like all of those and I wonder if that would look cool together. So let's come over here. What I did here is I clicked on our little gradient here, which opens up our gradient editor. And I'm gonna zoom in um, here so that we can just see the, the full scope of our texture that we've made. Um, and I'm gonna click here of pink, yellow, and olive. I think that I am going to make our olive like our dark color. So let's go ahead and change this. I'm gonna kind of bring this down into like this color that's very close to our yellow because we're gonna throw yellow in there. So it's kind of a yellowish olive green. Let's go ahead and say okay to that. Um, and then next, let's click in the center here. Um, and let's scope ourselves out kind of a pink color. Let's kind of bring this up like so, kind of more on the red side, bring it up. That's actually really cute together, to be perfectly honest. I really like it. Um, and I'm wondering actually if that pink should be at the end, like if we want to swap these. So we've got this pink over here and then make this one in the center here yellow. Let's kind of bring this up to like a yellow color like straight yellow that is like bordering on an orange. Let's do that. Um, and I think we need maybe for this to be, 
we might actually have to change the values in our in our piece to kind of because because that it's not really coming through so much so let's kind of push this yellow down closer to our um our olive tone um ooh, there we go we got some of that pink coming through um let's make it maybe a little more saturated so we can get like some real good obvious pink going um and let's even grab this little slider in between our olive and our yellow and let's bring that down that's actually kind of cute it's actually kind of cute um and i wonder if we're gonna go ahead and hit okay let's do that now because we made this a smart object we can actually hide this we can actually turn this toggle this on and off um and the colors i think actually work really well together you can't really see a lot of the texture but maybe then we could come in Control shift in to make a new layer i'll grab my brush i'll make sure that i select our nice uh kyle um, halftone brush here um let's grab like this it's kind of made us like a peachy color but let's go hunt for a pink okay um just to bring a pink in and then maybe we do this i wonder if we could go ahead and throw some of that in there um and i'm going to transform that and i'm gonna make this larger just so we can kind of enlarge that texture um and then let's control hmm how should we do this control l for our levels yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Just something that's a little more pink and we'll mask this and we'll come in with our soft round brush um, with our black and I'm gonna mask some of this away. All right, just to get that bright pink texture. I think that adds a nice little, little interesting gradient. So we got texture, we got colors from the chat, we got a cool background, um, and this is going to be the base. This is going to be the base for our streaming package. We've got maybe 25 minutes left, a little over 25 minutes, um, and I think we can turn this into something really, really cute. Um, I do love that, not gonna lie. I'm glad you love it. Um, peachy pink is such a pretty color, my fave. Where is Val from? The accent she has sounds so familiar. I am in Northern California. Um, I am, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like the way that I talk is very California, but I do have, I'm told I have some inflections that don't sound like certain words are said in California, but I am Irish and Creole. And I do have some some word inflections uh, from my grandparents on both sides. So maybe things sound a little strange to you, Jasmine. <laughs> um, Annika posting the Kyle T. Webster brushes um, in the chat. So definitely check that out. Um, now I want a peach drink. So do I. So do I. Big spring vibes for sure. I agree, Becca. Um, let me scroll through here and see... Um, orange or yellow accent. I think we're kind of, I think we're kind of combining a lot of the chat's color desires in here for sure. Way to bring it back, Val. Class is in session. I'm trying my best, Mike. It's good to see you. All right, so we've got our background. I'm going to go ahead and select these and I'm going to, we'll convert this to smart object too. So the, the, the great thing about converting to smart object is that if I want to come back and edit this, all I have to do is come over to the icon for the, uh, the layer, um, and just double click it and it will open this, um, in another file. And you can see it's kind of big cause I did, um, free transform that texture we made with the brush. I free transformed it large and then we masked it, but you can, you can still edit it. Um, you could even come in here inside of that smart object you just opened. Um, and you can double check that, double click that first one and it brings you back to your original purple um, that we started with, which is really great. So I'm gonna go ahead and close these cause we're just gonna work with this. Um, and now we are going to um, make our first screen, which I'm gonna put my notes up here and unhide them. So we're doing a starting soon screen first. So now we've got this background. I'm gonna call this um, main vibe, okay? Uh, and let's uh, use some text. So I'm going to come through here and I'm going to look. I really love um, Lust and Coven. Those are two of my most favorite um, fonts. Uh, but this uh, Cubano is really cool as well. So maybe we... Cubano is kind of cool because it's got some round edges in it, which are really nice. And we definitely have like round elements um, in our piece here. But we are going to be making some 
rectangle elements too, because we're gonna need to make borders. We're gonna need to make like a little frame for our webcam um, and so on. So maybe Cubano would look nice for this. So let's try it. I'm gonna go ahead and just throw some text in here. Um, and I, I mean, you can, you can organize this however you want. Um, if you're going to be creating a kind of an assets pack with me or, um, get some inspiration, um, from this, something that you can do is just default to big, bold text in the center of the canvas. So if I say, um, I'm going to go ahead in caps, I'm going to say starting soon. This is a great, uh, way to just get the point across. Um, anybody who's watching this on any kind of device, if you use this for your stream, they can read it if they are looking on um, a, a computer desktop, if they're watching on a tablet, if they're watching on um, their phone. Um, it's bold, you can see it, um, and it works. Uh, so we could do that. You could also play with different um, things to say if you want. Um, you don't have to put starting soon. You could say, um, what's up folks, stream starting soon, you know, or sometimes people say stuff like sit back, grab a snack and get ready. Whatever you think is good for you and your brand, but I am going to go with starting soon because it's an easy one for us. Um, and I think that what would look really good with our background is if we did like some super high contrast. So I'm going to leave the starting soon as black text um, and I am going to make a new layer above um, and I do this because I'm an illustrator and I like to paint in textures and everything. If you want to change the actual color of your, your font here to whatever color you want, go for it. But I like to use clipping masks um, for this portion when I am creating streaming assets. So I am going to paint bucket in this bright pink that we have been using um, for, our, for our piece. I'll just paint bucket that in. Very, very, very uh, vibrate-y. Um, if that is, if that can be a, a word, um, super vibrate -y. but what I want to do is let's make another layer. Let's do another clipping mask. Um, and I'm going to grab like a bright, like a very bright color with our, um, let me make sure I'm on my brush. Just kind of do the same thing. Um, let's grab our, actually let's do like a 300 here. Make sure I'm not in caps lock. Um, and I'm just going to hold shift and I'm going to drag out a little line of a brighter color here. And we're going to free transform that. And we're going to make that large here too, just to kind of match the, the, the bigger, um, the bigger shapes that we had. And we'll mask that and we'll take our soft round brush. Um, and we will kind of mask like a, like an ombre effect, a little ombre. So now you can read that better, right? Now you can read that a little bit better. Um, we could also... Let's go ahead and duplicate our text. Give it a little 3D border because you could add a stroke to this if you wanted to. I guess we could we could come over here um, if we want to go into our um, character styles over here, which if you don't see, you can access by going to window um, and scrolling to find um, character or character styles. Um, and we could do, let's see, let's pull up. Yeah, here we go. If I wanted to add, um, Actually, you know what? I don't typically add it this way. You can come into to, to, to properties and do kind of whatever you want. But I think that what I what I would actually do is convert it to smart object again. I use so many smart objects in this. You guys don't have to do this if you want, if you don't want to. But I would maybe convert it to a smart object and then just start using the text as a shape. Um, or as I've done here, um, I, you can duplicate it. And actually we can change the color of this text. Um, let's go ahead and hide this real quick. So we are looking at our black. Um, I am going to hit T on my keyboard. Let's do it this way. Um, and I'm gonna select our olive color which we got suggested from the chat. I'm gonna make it a little dark, but still pretty saturated. Make that visible again. And I'm gonna control T to free transform. And I'm gonna bump this uh, left. And I'm gonna bump it down. Give us a little drop shadow. So it's not a drop shadow, but it's kind of a drop shadow. And I think it's cute. <laughs> I think it's cool. Let's just do it that way. I think that's, that's a little easier. So now we have our starting soon page, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually duplicate this main vibe. Um, I am also going to duplicate our, um, 
our text. Let me go ahead and, and group all of our text together. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want everything to be cohesive from screen to screen that we make. And this is a really great way to do this. So if we, um, holding shift and selecting all the, these, if we now control G, make that, we'll, we'll call this um, text. And that's just going to be in our group that we're about to make a new for our starting soon screen. I am going to duplicate this. I'm going to bring um, our original text down um, and then I'm going to group these two together. Control G and we're going to call this starting uh, soon. Boom. So now we have that. That's our starting soon screen. You can even convert that to smart object if you want. Keep it all nice and crispy. Um, and I'll put that down there at the bottom. Now we have to make something that's easy to do is if we know that our starting soon screen is going to look like this, um, we can kind of duplicate that with our BRB or our ending. Um, another thing that we could do actually thinking about it, I'm going to go ahead and control Z a few times before we, um, set that up. Let's come back in here. Let's go back into our text and on top here with a solid color, I am going to tap right here and I'm going to write um, at voodoo Val. We're going to make this our um, olive tone. Boom. Uh, we're going to make that a little darker to increase visibility. Um, and what I'm going to do is just put that right here. Let's go ahead and grab, I don't have um, any icons right now for like social media logos, but this is something that I think would also be great for you to, to definitely add um, to your, to your overlay. So now we have, you know, it would have your, your social handles or what have you um, here and you can kind of, let's, let's align this, make that cute. Boom. Um, let's call this, I'll group that and call that social. Um, and I'm going to duplicate that three times because maybe you have, uh, you know, Twitter, Instagram, and I don't know, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you know, maybe that's, it'll just be, a uh, um, examples. Um, and we'll group all of these socials. Um, I have a bad habit of racking up the groups. <laughs> in my projects um, and that's just what happens um, if you want to be a little more organized you go for it but i'm just trying to get this point across so now we have starting soon i have you know a little example of where all of my different social media stuff could go and that works you could even if you wanted to if we want to grab another um thing here i could even put my logo um you know if i ha have a logo that i want to put right here um that could go right here if we center that um above our text maybe there's a, a a logo that goes there um boom um it could look like this um uh, maybe we would bump the rest of everything down just so that it is uh kind of aligned let's go ahead and can we can we go ahead and group all of this stuff bump it down boom yeah i like it and then we can bring the ellipse down for the logo just an idea you know what i mean because maybe you want maybe you want your branding logo um right there maybe that works for you i don't know um i might i might leave it i might actually turn that on a lower opacity um just to kind of so it's not so in your face because it's a pretty bright color but there we go so now we have our starting soon we have where our logo would go we've got some social media you know no appreciative appreciation for the olive color. Yeah, I actually, I don't use olive a lot, but it looks really good and like cute almost with the pink. Um, it's pretty great. I couldn't pinpoint it. My brain was saying very Midwestern. I suck at identifying accents. I was curious. Oh no, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. I'm, I'm very interested that you, um, noticed, uh, maybe different inflections, um, in the way I talk. I find that very fascinating. Um, Frank says I have a French accent. I think that's super cool. Um, yes, sit back and grab a snack. That's hey, I've seen a lot of people that say that. Um, great tip about color theory and vibrant colors, Val. Yeah, you know, um, I that's typically, if, if anyone in the chat has not heard that before, when you have two colors that are like very saturated and super bright and they kind of look odd, a lot of people 
refer to that as vibrating colors. Like they're vibrating together. Um, and if you have trouble reading colors next to each other like that, there's gonna be tons of other people who have trouble reading colors next to each other like that as well. So it's always great um, to try and contrast the values of colors that you're using to increase readability. Um, so, all right, so we've got our starting soon. I'm gonna turn that to um, a smart object. Actually, we'll do that in a sec. I'm gonna duplicate it, J. We're gonna call this BRB, BRB, let me make sure this is caps, BRB. Um, and then in here, I'm gonna come in and change our change our text. So let's hit T on our keyboard. This is a, a, a copy of our starting soon here. So now we're gonna change this to be right back. And we've duplicated this, so we don't have to go in and add the textures again and add the colors again. It's gonna look perfectly cohesive like it belongs to the same set. So we'll say BRB, boom. Um, and I think I'd like to center the text as well. Um, and then we will control T and let's drag that. I'm holding shift, just dragging this over to the perfect center here, which should be the perfect center. Um, and then with our text tool, let's also come over here um, and hit BRB. Um, and then I am going to make sure this is centered as well. Um, and we will drag this over and then they'll be centered for the, the next one that we make. Boom. All right. Um, you could say BRB on there. Some, you know, that's kind of simple. It's almost kind of cute, but maybe we don't, maybe we don't want that. Maybe we want, um, Maybe we want it to actually say, be right back. Boom, let's try that. I'm gonna hide this. Be right back. And then let's, boom. Cute, there's our BRB, y'all. There it is. So we got starting soon, we've got BRB. Um, Let's do a see you next time because that'll that'll uh, work for our ending screen. See you next time. Um, maybe we can do see you huh. It's kind of large. We could do, we could do this. We, we'll, we'll make two lines. See you next time. Cause that's another thing is like, you know, you're not always gonna be using the exact same amount of space every time you create something, right? So you're gonna have to figure out how to reorganize stuff. Um, and this works. Let's kind of change the distance. Let's go to, um, uh, let's see. Let's kind of bump this in together there, change that. Um, and we'll say yes. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna duplicate this. Um, and then I'm gonna bump this right in there and unhide. Um, and let's go ahead and hide that. How did I just, hold on, I'm gonna undo what I did there. I just confused myself. All right, so I'm gonna actually bump this up here um, and I am going to move our socials down. Let's put it right there. Um, and then we could probably move everything center. So it'll be slightly different than our, um, our first two, but I think that's okay. Everything is still um, organized and nice. Um, how are we doing on time? We got about 10 minutes left and I think that we can definitely, um, get this done. Let's go ahead and change our be right back. Can we actually duplicate? Oh, you know what? It might've changed that to a clipping mask. Let's go ahead and put this here and let's um, release clipping mask. Can I do that? Let's go ahead and delete this, delete. There we go. Let's delete that one. And then we will clip all of these 
to the new. Oops. Great clipping mask. All right, see you next time. Um, and you could duplicate this texture. Go ahead and control J. Um, and let's bring this down underneath here. Control T, or we could bring this um, so that the top of these, the second row of letters also has um, that texture. And then we could use the masking again to kind of mask out on the top, um, just to kind of pull, you know, oops, make sure I'm on my top here. Um, just to kind of make sure that it doesn't overlap here, you know, so this top still has its nice ombre, um, and then the uh, the bottom here is getting kind of its its own little ombre. I think that's cute. So we got your see you next time. That works for me. Oh, we got to make sure that this is staggered. However, boom. Okay. Um, and there we go. There's a, an ending. Now, how are we going to do our, like our face cam and all that good stuff? Cause we've got some pretty great screens. We got our ending, we have our be right back. We have our starting soon. Um, and then we're gonna need to make like our, our other screens. So let's make a new group and let's call this finished. I'm gonna group all of these together. Um, control G and I'm gonna call this finals. Boom. So we've got our screens. We'll put our finals down here at the bottom. Now we got to make like our main cam. So how do you want that to look? Now I have mine like this. I just made one simple background image and I made a little name tag that goes in front. And for a lot of people that works. Um, so we could just do something like that. So if we wanted to make that um, look like what I've got going on here, we could maybe take this text and we could throw that um, let's throw that over here maybe we make it small boom um, and maybe the little main name tag we've got going is like uh, a little rectangle I guess we could let's let's keep it simple um, let's not try to do anything wildly fancy um, since we are running low on time here just to um, show how I create these things um, and let's what do you guys think this color should be the background here should we do like our peach color that's in the center what do you guys think um, about 10 minutes left here with Val um, yes indeed about 10 minutes um, but I love the banter sometimes <laughs> miss the stream oh no Jennifer it's good to see you though it's good to see you. Great set, Val. Thank you so much, Mike. I'm glad that you are enjoying it. Um, let's, yeah, more saturated peach. All right, let's go for it. Cause we've got that olive color behind. So I think that we could totally um, vibe with that. Let's come over here to our color picker. Let's grab this peach color and let's see how that looks. Let's see. Mm, I like it, but I think maybe we could improve it. We are gonna change that text, um, but I think we could improve it if we clipped, let's go ahead and grab um, uh, our, our texture here, our texture brush. Um, and let's play with, uh, hmm, maybe with the olive, maybe with the olive color. Let's grab the olive. Um, and let's go ahead and do something like that. That kind of that kind of works. Let's clip that clipping mask, um, and let's uh, add an actual layer mask. And we'll come in and grab this uh, soft round. Make sure we're not on caps lock, so we can see the outline of our um, our brush shape here. And then maybe we'll do something like that. Um, and we can turn that on a lower opacity. I'm thinking something like that. Yeah, just to add a little little spice, a little spice there, pretty cute. Um, and I would change that to my name, you know, be a name tag there. Um, but you can also come in, add some big crazy shapes, um, kind of like I have here. I have like the show logo. I've got like this burst behind me, something like that. You could add a frame and maybe a frame is what we go with. How are we doing on time? We got maybe four minutes. Um, so I will add last minute here. I want to make sure that our rectangle and all this good stuff. Let's go ahead and group that. Let's call this name tag. 
Um, and then let's add a frame, which is for the frames for this show, all I did was add um, a rectangle. Just grab a, grab a rectangle here and kind of drag that out. Um, let's put it behind our name tag here. Um, and then I am going to, just with my move tool, I'm gonna go ahead and center this. If we can get this nice and centered here. Boom, I think that's good enough for me. Uh, and I am going to add a stroke. Let's make the stroke um, our nice olive color. Um, and let's take the fill color out. Uh, and I'm gonna round the corners. I'm gonna go ahead and round the corners. Let's actually make sure, yeah, let's let's make sure it's all, all the corners are co coming in. I think that's pretty cool. You could clipping mask to these, add a little more something, something. Um, and then what I did for like this actual scene we're on here in the stream um, is I selected inside of my shape here and punched that shape right out of the background um, so that I can just place this right over. I'm actually gonna do some crazy behind the scenes here so that you folks can see. Are you ready? You guys ready? Um, check this out. Can you see? I just moved my actual overlay. I just punched it out like this. So now you guys are kind of getting like a behind the scenes view of like how that works. So that is how I would go through creating um, a set of different, uh, different streaming assets. Um, when you go to save these things, just so you, so you know, um, so say this is, um, the finished product for your, um, your background. I'm going to hide the rectangle. Maybe last minute here, we will throw in a, um, an ellipse. Let's drag this out right here. I'm going to hit V on my keyboard throw this right here. Maybe this is just some kind of crazy, I don't know, crazy design element. Um, we'll change this to, how about our yellow color or a pink color? I like the pink. Um, and uh, maybe it's, you know, it's crazy, it's wacky. We've got, you know, some textures and things going on here, like in some of our other, um, our other regions. Um, and the way that you would split this up as you go uh, to, to use these in your streams, is um, you will want to save the background, okay? You wanna save this background um, separately as its own image minus, okay, minus your name tag. So this is, let me, this is all the text needs to be together. So minus the name tag. So you save this as the background, okay? And then with all of this hidden, let's go ahead and hide this, group that together. Then you save something that's just a transparent background with just the name tag. And then you put your background in there, like here, I've got my background, then I put me, then I put my name tags. So you kind of layer it like Photoshop layers, but in your streaming software. Um, so I hope that that helped everybody kind of figure out how they might design their own streaming stuff. Um, I had a blast. It was kind of a rush there because we did get a late start today, um, but I can't wait to see what you folks do. Please, if you made some assets today, post it in the game show channel of the Photoshop Discord. Next week, um, we are gonna dive into another quick project and I'm gonna pull up that Discord and I'm, I'm gonna look up all of the projects you folks have done for the show. Give every one of you guys a shout out, check out your work um, and all that good stuff. That'll be next week uh, on Tuesday, same time, same place. But it's time for me to go. So I gotta take off folks. Um, it's been an absolute blast. Hope you enjoyed it. I know I enjoyed designing for you and I will see you next time. <laughs>